I'm Dr. Bernard, this is my TA Indiana, and this is a crank slider. When the crank hub is perfectly aligned with the slider, you can see that the return stroke takes just as long as the forward advance stroke. Ain't nobody got time for that. She makes a good point. Instead, let's design a quick return crank slider. By introducing asymmetry to the problem by shifting the crank hub a distance y away from the slider axis, this will result in the push stroke taking more than 180 degrees and therefore longer, and the return stroke will take less than 180 degrees and be faster, hence the name quick return. Crank sliders are usually found with a motor driving a piston, although sometimes you find them in reverse where the slider is actually the driving force and it's powering a wheel on the other end. In almost all of these applications, one directional stroke of the slider is gonna be doing all of the work and the other direction is just gonna be resetting itself so that it can push again. To design a crank rocker, there's three dimensions you need to identify. The first one is gonna be the crank length, which I've labeled as R1. The second is the length of your coupler, which I'm labeling here as R2. And the third is gonna be the distance Y. This is how offset the crank hub is from the path of the slider. And suppose you have two design objectives. You wanna achieve a slider stroke length of 10 inches, and you wanna do this with an advanced return time ratio of 1.4. What you'll find is that there's actually an infinite number of solutions to this problem. So we get to start off with a choice. You can actually choose any number you want for any of the three quantities. So for me, I'm arbitrarily gonna choose a crank length of two inches. But later on in this video, I'll show an alternative what would have happened if I had chosen a different length for this value. The sequence of steps I'm gonna to use to design this crank slider is going to be to first account for the time ratio in determining the toggle positions of the crank slider, that is when it shifts from push stroke to return and vice versa. Once I've accounted for the time ratio, then I'm gonna solve for the coupler length. And then the last step is gonna to be to solve for that offset distance Y. So looking first at this advanced return time ratio, which I'm calling Q, I'm gonna define two angles. Alpha is gonna be the return stroke and beta is gonna be the advanced stroke or the push stroke or forward. For a crank rotating counterclockwise, this drawing shows the two toggle positions. And these toggle positions will occur when the coupler and the crank are perfectly aligned. The end of the push stroke and start of the return stroke occur when the crank and coupler are in their fully extended position. And then on this drawing, when the crank is pointed up and to the left, you can see the end of the return stroke, start of the push stroke, happens again when the crank and coupler are aligned, but this time the coupler is overlapping the crank. And what we know about these angles, alpha and beta, is that they have to add up to 360 degrees, and the ratio between them is gonna be 1.4. That's the desired time ratio. A little algebra lets you find that you get an angle of alpha equals 150 degrees. So next, in order to find the length of the coupler, I'm gonna be using this red triangle. The length of the right diagonal is the sum of the coupler and crank lengths. The left diagonal is gonna be the difference, the coupler length minus the crank length. And then that angle in between is gonna be 180 degrees minus the angle alpha. And the base of the triangle is the stroke length, which is one of our design criteria. And since I already chose the length of the crank, I'm gonna be able to solve for the coupler length using a law of cosines. So here I've written in the law of cosines and substituted in the 10 inch stroke length and two inch length that I've chosen for the crank, along with the 150 degree angle for alpha. If you wanna look in detail about all of this algebra, you may wanna pause the video for a minute, but this single law of cosines gets me to an answer of 17.8 inches for the coupler length, leaving just one more piece to find the offset distance y. And to find this offset distance Y, I'm gonna draw one more triangle, because if there's one thing I know engineering students love doing is drawing triangles. If I can just find this angle theta, I can use the hypotenuse in order to get Y. Using the original triangle that I used to find the coupler length, I can find that angle theta using a law of sines. And then now since this new orange triangle is a regular right triangle, just a single sine value, and you get a Y value of about 15.7 inches. And this is what the final crank rocker looks like. You can see that there is a return stroke of 150 degrees, a forward stroke of 210 degrees, a very short two inch crank with a much longer coupler, almost 18 inches, and that offset distance also pretty large, almost as long as the coupler itself. 
So how would this have been different if instead of choosing two inches at the beginning, I had chosen a longer length? First, I'll check the time ratio alpha and beta. You can see here that none of the lengths have anything to do with the toggle positions. The forwardmost and backmost toggle positions for the slider are only dependent on the time ratio. So alpha and beta would not change. The coupler length definitely would change. In general, a longer crank is gonna result in a shorter coupler because when you have a defined distance that you want the slider to oscillate back and forth between, if the crank already gets you closer to the further point, then the coupler doesn't need to reach as far. And so here you can see that a six inch crank results in only an eight inch coupler. When solving the offset distance, I'll first need to find a new value for that angle theta. And the final value for offset distance y is drastically smaller than before. And now here you can see what both mechanisms look like side by side. They both have the same stroke length of 10 inches. They both have the same advance to return time ratio, but because the crank has a different length in each case, the crank hub position has to be in a different location for each. And which one of these two designs is actually better is probably going to depend on the spatial constraints of your mechanism. If you want a much flatter design, you could go for a longer crank since you'll have a much smaller offset. But if power is a concern, that's where you may want to go with the shorter crank length. We normally think of leverage as being beneficial. Usually when you have a very long lever and you apply a force, you get a larger moment because of the added length. But with motors, the length actually works against you. When you're starting with a moment, the force you get at the end is the moment divided by the length of the crank. So a much shorter crank will usually give you a larger force at the end that is applied to the coupler. So for a high torque application, that's where you may prefer to have a shorter crank length and a much larger offset distance Y. Last demonstration is gonna be what would happen if you wanted a really large time ratio, say a time ratio of eight. We start off finding alpha and beta angles. You need an alpha angle of 40 degrees to achieve a time ratio of eight to one. And if we draw a picture of what this might look like with an angle of alpha of 40 degrees, it seems like it should be possible to actually solve, right? I can still draw these triangles and solve for lengths that will make this work. But in practice, this is not what would actually happen. What would actually happen is at this 40 degree angle, the slider would be in the yellow position shown here. For any one crank location, there's actually two possible locations for the end of the slider. And you can find that just based on symmetry across this red dotted line. So if you actually built this design that based on this graphical technique, seems like it should lead to an eight to one time ratio, you would actually find that the point that you thought was gonna be the max retracted position, one of the toggle locations, locations is actually just an intermediate spot only a few inches from where you started. And so this is why there's a maximum value for a time ratio or a minimum value for angle alpha because you have to ensure that all of your locations are always gonna be on one side of the crank position. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I'm snapping my fingers up here so Indy will look at the camera for once. If you enjoyed this quick return crank slider video, the next video that you should watch is gonna be a quick return crank rocker. There's gonna be a very similar graphical solution technique as for this one, but it's a little more complicated because you have two pin joint positions for the hub of the crank and the hub of the rocker. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.